Hello, everybody. Well, I've already said hello to most of you, so I would like to say hello to the new ones. Uh, I'm Sabrina, and I would like you to introduce you to Janet. Uh, Janet was born in England and lived there all her life up until three years ago when she moved to Italy. I'm not going to pronounce the, the town where you live, Janet. <laughs> she is a lifelong teacher educator with over 30 years experience in English language teaching. And she retains the same passion for her job as, as when she first started her career in 1979 in Madrid, Spain. Uh, that shows in her wonderful job that she is doing online. She, her areas of interest include uh, using technology in her lessons, learning about Web 2.0 tools, and effective ways of using images. When she's not in the classroom, she enjoys writing her wonderful blog, Janet's Abruzzo Ed blog. And here I'm going to share with you the, the link, just in case you would like to check it out. So now I will leave you with Janet, who is going to tell us a bit about how to exploit comics and cartoons in the classroom. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sabrina, for that lovely introduction. And hello, everybody. I'm really thrilled to be here. Can you hear me OK? If you'd like to put a smiley face or say something. Thanks, Leanne. Oh, excellent. So that means you're hearing me loud and clear. That's, that's great. OK, well, I'll begin my introduction, my, my session, which is called Fun Ways of Exploiting Comics and Cartoons in the Classroom. I had a slight problem when I began to prepare for my session when I found out that so much has been written everywhere and in so many different places about comics and cartoons. So my problem was, how could I be a little bit original and not repeat exactly what everybody has said? And so the only way I could be slightly original was to create my own comics for this session. So I've been working very hard the past few weeks creating comics, particularly for this uh, talk, and also getting my students to create comics uh, when possible. OK, so I'm Janet, and I'm thrilled to be taking part in Ask On 3. And as you can see, I'll be talking about comics and cartoons in the language class. And this is using Toondoo.com, which is one of my favorite cartoon sites. OK, so here's a cartoon I've created with bitstrips.com. And again, it's just another way of introducing this, this session. And that's me there in the uh, green top, as you can see. OK, so why use comics and cartoons? I've blanked out my ideas. And if you'd like to put in the chat box one or two ideas for why should we or would it be good to use? Yeah, fun. Thank you, James. Great. To develop writing, that's perfect graphic learning. Memorable. Yes, yes. Thank you. That's, that's great. Engagement, creative, imaginative, etc. And yes, they do love comics, as I've seen at first hand. Excellent. OK, great. Well, these are what I've sort of written. Uh, because they're engaging, they're educational. Yes, James, they're, they're not difficult, they're fun, and yes, they lead to great creativity in the classroom. And hopefully, I'll be showing you some examples of the creativity. And they're easy. Yes, most of them are very easy to use. Uh, that's true. OK, now, cartoons and comics, what do they promote? I've got some ideas that, that I've done research on. Uh, I was wondering if you'd like to just write down what sort of things do cartoons promote. Autonomy. Thanks, Leanne. Yeah, that's great. Literacy. Fantastic. Creativity. Thanks. Yes. Very good. OK. F reading fluency. Pictures test. Yes. Excellent. Humor. Lots and lots of different things. So um, engagement. Exactly. Thanks, Clive. So, 
I think you mentioned these. Uh, reading, writing skills are improved. The learning opportunities for creativity are fantastic. Promoting cultural awareness. Higher level thinking skills. Yes, thank you. That's a great idea. Cross curricular skills. Doesn't have to be in an English language uh, uh, class. Uh, you could be doing things for geography, for history, and so on. It's cross curricular, which is fantastic. Okay. So these are some of the adjectives that, that came to mind when I was thinking of why use comics, cartoons, uh, innovative, engaging, eye-catching, energizing, exciting, and powerful, actually, and effective, meaningful. And I think mostly of all, they are great, great fun to view and to create. And this is uh, I've used imageshift.com. I've just typed in my list of adjectives, and then I chose the heart shape to generate uh, adjectives which reflect uh, using comics. Okay, now I'm going to show you some ideas that I've I've learned by reading from the resources that I've been able to pull together on Scoop It. And what I did was I just typed in the main principal ideas. And here you can see what you can do with comics and cartoons. So any ideas, prediction activity, what would you use them for? Yes, Image Chef is great, and Word Clouds too. It is Wordle, www.wordle.net. Assessment, yes, yes, you can use them for assessment to give them grades, for example, or sort of... Um, give them feedback in, in some way. The word portfolio here, students can use them to build up a portfolio of work that they've created, giving feedback and opinions of various things, showing progress. Any words that you can see? Yes, student displays, thank you. That's, that's a very nice thing. Yes, exactly. They would uh, make a comic to show what they've learned about the topic, and then that would be sort of produced and put on display. Great. Mm -hmm. Are there any other words here which perhaps are keywords for how, why you could use comic, comics? There's one word here, sequencing. Comics are excellent for jumbling up a sequence of events, and then you can get your students to put the sequence of events in order. Yes, stories, narration, fantastic. OK, so these words are just uh, part of the ideas that, that I've got in the next slide, and narration, exactly. OK, so basically, just a list of um, ideas that uh, I found out and I, I use uh, some of them from my research that I did. Uh, students can, or a teacher can keep a portfolio of all the comics students have created to serve as a measure of progress. Obviously, I think even beginners could take pride in, in creating very, very easy and simple comics, and I have done so in the past, and it's a measure of progress as they develop. What I have done in the past is uh, students have created comics, and then I print them out, enlarge them, A3. Uh, style, and then display them on classroom walls, and perhaps they reflect a grammar point, etc. And that's great as a memory sort of uh, test. So, creating comics to use as signs and posters around the school, I think that's a good idea. I haven't actually done that, but I think I would love to do that one day. Students can introduce themselves via comics at the beginning of a term and create a collage to put on the class wall. Now, that idea is, is one that I've read uh, on the resources that I'll be showing you later on. Okay, And I think that's a particularly good idea, because you don't have the actual face, which they might be embarrassed about, but they can create a comic. And then, sort of around the class walls, you have all the students in different avatars. I would say that's nice. Okay, and ideas I've, I've um, read about and I think are good is to write a short book review as a comic strip instead of traditional way of just writing on paper. Okay, I mentioned sequencing, and this is quite a good uh, activity to jumble up the comics and then 
students put them in order and you could teach uh, linking words at the same time. I've done this in the past whereby you create a comic and the character states a controversial opinion and then from that it will generate a discussion. It's just it's a nice presentation to whatever discussion you are doing. You just put it up as a slide share or PowerPoint and then you move on from there. Choose topical comics and cartoons to use as a base for introducing a class discussion. And I often do this with higher level students that I can perhaps quickly take a comic from a, a paper, paper of the day, or online paper which has a comic or cartoon, quickly put it up uh, via the internet, via my um, computer, and ready to discuss. So that's quite a good idea. Well, where do you begin? There are so many cartoon sites that it's difficult to know which ones to really focus on. And I do have my, my favorites, so I'm going to be showing you some activities that I use with a few of the many comic sites that are available. And at the end of my session, uh, when I show you the Scoop It creation site, you will see lots and lots of comics that you can look into and investigate for yourself. Okay, well, the top five for me, but there are, of course there are many more, are Make Belief Comics. They're very visual, very exciting. Bit Strips, I'll be showing you an example. Toon Do, you probably all know Toon Do. That's, that's, that's one of the very, very nice ones. WriteComics.com, I've made a lot of cartoons by that. And recently, I've got into Superheroes Marvel Comics. And I like all these because, as most of the comic sites, they are free. And they give you lots of extra ideas to, to use with these comics. So uh, we'll start off here. This is just a screenshot. OK, yes, uh, Sabrina, what I've done at the end is I've um, put a live link to my correct sorry, my Scoop It site, which is just on comics and cartoons, and I've created it specifically just for this session, okay, uh, so that that is where I've taken my resources, and that is where everybody can go, and you're going to be amazed at the huge amount of information, okay, so I'll be showing you that at the end. Thanks, Sabrina. So this is SuperheroSquadMarvel.com, and I'm going to show you some examples of what you can do. Very easy. The only thing is that you can download as a PDF. You can't quite save it onto your computer, uh, as far as I know. But you can print the comics that you create immediately. And I would say that's fantastic, because then they are available to put on walls and to use as flashcards, etc. You've only used Kapoof. OK, I've never used Kapoof. So I'll have a go at that one day. <laughs> and see what that's like. OK, so I'm going to give you some ideas of what, how I've used uh, comics. And I'm actually going to show you comics that I've created specifically. OK, so from Superhero Squad Marvel Comics, this is a little promotion that I did that I think I put out on Twitter or definitely on my blog. And you have characters here. The third Reform Symposium conference is going to be a super cool event. Don't miss it. OK, so that was just a little way of introducing Ask on 3. And it's, it was so simple. Just wham, gazow, something unmissable. You've got to attend. And you're all here, so that's fantastic. You're attending. OK, now once I had a comment in the blog, um, and I thought I wanted to reply to the comment. And the question was, at the end of the blog post, why don't you let students create their own word searches? Because I've actually done a post on interactive word search puzzles. And I said they were fantastic for teachers, which, of course, is great. But then I had a comment from um, an educator, why don't you let students create them? And I thought, yes, of course. So I replied, fab idea. Thanks, David, in my comment. But then to sort of make my comment a little bit more, I don't know, fun, I quickly created a comic which I added to the blog post. And this is my answer. OK, so that's the person who asked me the question. And that's me saying thank you to the suggestion uh, that had come within my blog post. 
Okay, I'm very proud to show you this comic strip created by my little niece, who's only eight years old. And she came to visit one day and she said, Auntie Janet, Auntie Janet, can I work on the computer with you? And I said, yes, I'm going to teach you how to do comic. And she absolutely loved the idea. And without me having to explain so much, she intuitively, as all digital natives seem to do, was able to create this comic strip. She chose everything and she actually did a storyboard first. Uh, she had a little bit of paper. We brainstormed how she wanted her comic to look and what she wanted, which characters. And she knew she wanted to have fire in it and an evil person because apparently that's what um, is always in comics. So here you go. Ah, it's a fire and it's getting bigger. So you have a picture of the fire. I can get my hose and put out the fire. And then you have the evil character. Yes, robot. It's me, evil fire shredder. I was most impressed, actually, by uh, this, this, this comic strip. OK. So uh, and I asked her, do you use comics at school? And she said, yes, Auntie Janet, we do. And I said, why do you use them? And she said, well, we use them um, as storyboards. We, we, we sort of think of how to write a story on paper, but we create comics first, and then we actually do the long piece of writing. I thought, wow, she's only eight. Jolly good. Sort of good school. It's very uh, cutting edge. OK, now I'm very proud to present. And Annalisa is here. She's one of my primary school teachers that I've just finished teaching at the Lake School of English in Oxford. I did a course with 24 teachers. And I introduced web to tools. And of course, I introduced comics as often as I could. And Annalisa was able to create this comic, which she sent to me by email. And I'm very proud to show it you here during my session. So jazz up dialogues. And there's no smoke without fire. To be honest, it doesn't seem the right way to prove it. Now, all this vocabulary had come up in class. We had been doing discussion, little pointers. So to be honest, is something which had been taught previously. My pleasure, Annalisa. I'm very proud of you to, uh, I'm very proud to be showing your, your lovely cartoon here. OK, so what I do often is that I get students to practice short dialogues uh, on various subjects and then go onto the computer and in front of everybody, either myself or the students, create a cartoon, usually ones that don't need registering so that they're quick and easy. OK, and Superhero Squad, you don't have to register for it. So you just, in front of everyone, just, just create it in seconds. And uh, it's a great way of jazzing up, spicing up. Yes, all these sites are free, Mary. Uh, and I, I don't usually use sites that you pay for. In fact, I don't use any sites that you pay for. So they are all on the internet. Uh, you just need and the link is at the bottom there. OK. So make powerful statements. I did a Zeta course in storytelling. Yes, you can use in some comic sites, especially Make Believe comics in particular, you can um, create comics in any language or in most languages. So that is why it's, it's, it's you know, a great site. I particularly like that one. So make a powerful statement. I wanted to just say something about storytelling. So I came up with this slogan, life is one big evolving story just waiting to be written. The session was on storytelling, so I just introduced uh, my seminar, sorry, my, my forum post by including this comic. So in forum posts, when, when you are doing Moodle uh, courses, you can spice up a little post by adding a little comic here and there in, in context, obviously. Okay. So this is just another cartoon I created to put on my blog to promote the ASCOM 3. And uh, this is me again saying it's going to be fantastic. With music or a song, to tell you the truth, Faisal, I, I haven't really used storytelling with music. Sometimes with, with songs, yes, I do. 
Um, but uh, as I've shown here, um, I sort of like storytelling with, with cartoons usually. But yes, of course, music is great. So you can make comic strips which show a story, but you can introduce perhaps the middle part of the story that you've created, or you could introduce the first part of the <coughs> comic strip, strip, strip that you've created, or you could show them the <coughs> me, the last part of the comic strip that you've shown, and then get students to predict what's the first part, or what's the middle part, or what's the last part of the story. And this is the first part of a little comic strip that I created for a digital story that I created recently, an idiomatic story. Things were going fine, but I couldn't get you out of my head, and I miss you so much, Isabella. I would ask the students to guess what the next part of that was. Okay. So, going on to stories, and perhaps sometimes you could get students Yes, there is a list of comic sites at the end. I'll, I'll be showing you. Okay. Uh, okay, where was I? Hmm. I'm, I've lost track. Let's have a look. Okay, yes. I was just saying, uh, choose the ending. And this is a little comic created with Superhero Squad Marvel. And what you do is you get students to create two endings. Don't worry, it's okay. <laughs> That's fine, I'm back on track now. Uh, you get students to create their own endings, different endings to a story that's begun, that's been begun uh, by the class. And then you could maybe put up a comment like this, choose the ending. And then you show two different endings to a story. Now, these are two that I created recently for a major love story connected to idioms. And the bad ending is that the heroine says, I wasn't born yesterday. Uh, once a cat, always a cat, go now or cut the store. Don't turn around. I don't want you anymore. You blew it, Frederick. And you've just seen Frederick here. This is Frederick. He was a bit of a cad, in fact, and he's abandoned her. But anyway, it's a long story, and you can read the story on my blog. <laughs> so that was the bad ending. The good ending was, Mio caro Frederico, I've never stopped loving you. My heart belongs to you forever. When I presented this at IATFL Brighton, uh, in April, I showed my audience, there were about 40 people in the audience, which one they preferred, and the overwhelming result was they preferred the bad ending. So poor Frederick had to turn around, walk out the door, and he blew it, basically. Okay, But my original ending was, <laughs> no, Clive, I didn't like that ending. I had to write that ending because my students, who were guinea pigs when I was pre um, creating my previous presentation, I showed them the two endings. And, sorry, I showed them the, my ending, which was the good one. And they said, no, Janet, that's too Hollywood. You can't have that as the ending of your presentation. So I had to sort of busily create the bad ending, and most people seem to like it. OK, cartoons, comics are fantastic, so guess the caption. Uh, online, these are all available, as far as I know. This is from the Daily Mail. Uh, all major newspapers online ones have cartoons. This is the Queen of England. And as you can see, there's a long tube, and she's talking to her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh. And what is she saying? Now, I'd ask you to guess by, by sort of jotting down the caption. Yes, I love the Corgis too. They're fantastic, aren't they? And the butlers, very um, British there. OK, so you'd if this was on the day that this cartoon had come out, I would actually quickly go online, and I'd click on the cartoon. Uh, I would maybe put something over it so the caption wasn't visible. And I'd ask, guess the caption, and then have a competition. And in fact, the caption is, the Queen says, that reminds me, Charles. That reminds me, Charles Wang. But this new line was so faint, I have no idea what he wanted, Charles being Prince Charles. Now, this is referring to the hacking scandal that's recently occurred in England. And so I suppose to avoid being hacked, the Queen is using, I don't know, like a tin or something to uh, get her message across. So I thought that was quite nice, very topical. Uh, doing this in class, I would move on to the topical event of the day, which would be hacking vocabulary and newspapers and so on. So that would be a nice introduction. Common slang expressions. 
<laughs> to bean cans and string, yes. Uh, this is typical English slang, if you want to make a guess, if you're not from England, it might be difficult. Dumping stuff, no mate, we're moving in. Now there are three slang words here, okay, which would be useful for teaching possibly middle, intermediate uh, level students. Dumping, any ideas, dumping stuff, if you're not, if you're not so aware of slang expressions in England. and. No, yes, thank you, Sabrina. Dumping is throwing stuff, uh, things, and no mate. You will often hear that in England, meaning no friend, we're moving in. Again, this is topical news of that day when it, when it um, occurred, is that the government is thinking of introducing super bins where whole communities just chuck everything or dump everything in one uh, bin, which looks as big as a house. Maybe they're homeless, so they're moving into uh, a big bin. Okay, it's um, a joke, it's um, great for uh, introducing slang expressions. Grammar practice, I use cartoons to introduce, for example, here, present perfect continuous, the man's been waiting, I've been waiting here for ages, have you, oh dear, and hope you don't have to wait for longer. And then, obviously, students create their own cartoons, comics on that particular topic, and then share them around the class on the internet. This comic was created by my primary group B, Lake School of English, uh, just recently. Hi, Karen. Um, and the topic was prepositions. So the controls of my spaceship are out of order. I'm at a loss. OK, so uh, this was a nice way to practice. And we did this in class. This was another one from my students uh, who created it as a result of lots and lots of expressions, prepositional phrases, okay. Oh, don't worry, Karen, lovely to see you here, great to see you. So, film reviews can be created, short ones. Uh, would you like to jot down on in the chat box which film this refers to? There's a big clue here, thank you for my Oscar. And then it's a clue, this actor actually said, I'm going to dance with Joy now. Okay, this was the actor. And this clue is in the crown. The King's Speech. Ha ha, not the King's Speech, but the, yeah, the King's Speech. The King's Speech with Colin Firth. Yes, that's the one. So again, uh, students could sort of write down a few key phrases or uh, expressions from reviews that they've read about the um, film. Introduce hypothetical questions via a cartoon. And how would you use, for example, a creation site like Scoop It in your lessons and classes? I actually put this on my blog post recently. Idioms and phrasals, fantastic way to get your students to create uh, dialogue. This is one I created recently. I'm snowed under with work. It's getting me down. You need to chill out. I could do with holiday. I've come up with a fabulous idea. Please go on. So lots and lots of different expressions. This is another one from my teachers from the Lake School of English in the past two weeks. We were doing idioms. I got them to create this um, cartoon with bright comics. You saved my bacon. You're welcome. And the little doggy says, you're playing. She's playing hard to get. OK, these are all expressions we'd studied and practiced in class. And this was just a fun way of, of exploiting them and, and sharing them. Another one is my, for my students, just focusing on phrasal verbs. And Primark here is a very special shop in Oxford. I'm looking forward to picking up some bargains in Primark. OK, so you saved my bacon. Uh, this policeman, perhaps she was uh, running across the road and a car was going to run her over. The policeman saved her by saying, look out. So you saved my bacon. You saved my life. OK, these are all typical sort of English idioms and phrasal verbs. OK, make police comics is fantastic. I love it because they, on the site, you can also download lots and lots of pre-created comic strips, OK, without any writing. And then you just download them, print them out, students fill them as they like, and perhaps you can do competitions. Uh, which students, which groups create the best sort of um, dialogues. Okay, so um, these are just different ways 
vocabulary review, phrasal verbs, review, etc. Expressing opinions. This is using stripgenerator.com. Okay, very nice site. Now you have to register on here if you want to keep your comics, but I created this uh, last night and um, I'm going to go back and I will register for it because it's fun. It's free, of course. And if you're doing opinions, nice way of exploiting functions. Do you agree with me? Yes, I do. In my opinion, it's a fab idea. Same here. So introducing functional language. It could be opinions. It could be opi um, complaining. It could be expressing likes, dislikes, anything. Okay, this is one I investigated last night. I couldn't help it. Sketch foo. And again, if you want to keep all your sketches that you can create on the site, you have to register. But I didn't register. I just uh, was curious. And a little while back, I created this. It's some, a site that allows you to draw. And you can have sort of some big lines or small lines. And hi, this is me. I think cartoons are brilliant. Do you agree with me? OK, so I've used the same cartoon that I showed you before. OK, um, it's time to finish. So all the research and resources for my Ask on 3 session on comics and cartoons can be located from my Scoop It creation site. As you, go, you save me from doing something bad. Yes. Yep, it, that's, that's, that's true. Yeah, or you save me from, uh, for example, you know, doing something bad, like, i.e. somebody's going to run me over. <laughs> OK, um, so this is my site where I've collected or curated now is the um, sort of uh, topic, I think, um, or the in word of the day. And if you just go to comics and cartoons via scoopit, www.scoopit.com, I've put all the different blogs and different sites which, which deal with cartoons and comics actually all in this site. So it's easy for me to find them, easy for you to find them. And um, it's just been a, a wonderful resource and um, area for me to investigate. And I created this last night. OK. And um, oh, it's, it's a dreadful picture, but I, you, know, you can use different colors. And this is me saying thank you. But I saw examples from other people. And I think I'm going to have to like copy. That's what you have to do. You just have to try out. You have to copy and see what uh, other people are using and doing. OK, so that's me saying thank you very much, everybody. And oops, that's it. Um, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'd like, I've done it to share these tools. Um, <laughs> as I said, uh, the only way I could be original was to create my own cartoons, because all the ideas I've read about. And so, so thank you very much. For elementary age students, yes, there's one um, from Tundu, and I think they do for younger learners. Um, I've just had a senior moment, which means I'm having a memory loss. I, I'm sorry, maybe somebody else might know if there's one specifically for children, but a lot of them, yes, bit strips is great for children. A lot of them are suitable for children, but obviously you have to uh, check them out before. Oh, thank you, Denise. Yes, uh, how you use Tundu. Great. Thank you, everyone, for attending. It's been lovely. I've enjoyed myself. OK. Thank you very much, Janet. My pleasure. Thank you, Sabrina. Oh, lovely, Clive. I'll, I'll have a look at that. So Kapoof is good for little ones. Bit strips is good for little ones. Um, Make Beliefs uh, is very good for little ones because it's, it's a huge educational site and a lot of different activities which you can download and story ideas uh, that can be uh, taken from the site. Faisal, can you utilize comics to teach spelling? Yes, why not? Because what you could do is you could get you could create a comic with a, a character spelling out a word with, with blanks in for some of the letters, and then students from the computer could actually 
maybe type in the, the, the whole word or the write down the whole, the whole word. I think that's a very nice idea, Faisal. Thank you for mentioning that. Yes, James, make beliefs in particular is, is a very, very sort of educational site. I mean, all of them obviously can be used um, for educational purposes, of course, but um, there are lots and lots of different ideas there which are downloadable and um, they are great for resources, yes. So if you go to the Scoop It Cartoons and Comics, honestly, there will be enough links there and lovely resources for you to look at for a long time to come. And I still need to look at them um, and, and delve into them and sort of uh, use them as well. Oh, thank you very much, Annalisa. I'm very pleased that uh, you enjoyed the sessions. What is the role of students in the comics? Uh, what do you mean in the comics? You mean, uh, for, for example, they can actually create stories uh, and show them to the rest of the class or as storyboards. Um, it's for improving digital literacy. Um, there are lots of different ways. It is student orientated. Yes, it can be. Obviously, the teacher, you show some examples. I think it's always a good thing. And then you get them in groups or in pairs or singly, if, obviously, if you have cartoon, um, computers available, or for homework. Because a lot of cartoon sites um, do allow you to email the cartoon, which then can be sent to you. And then you can compile them. You can do as you wish and create a collage of all their uh, comics. So um, hopefully that's something good. OK, so any more questions? Thank you, Miguel. Thank you for attending. And Barbara, thank you. And what I'll do is, um, and I've got a spare moment, I'm going to uh, put this presentation as a slide share in SlideShare, OK, so that you can just click on it. Uh, and then I think you can do as you wish with it. Could you go outside with the scoop it link? Yes, of course, yes. Uh, oops, sorry. Ah, uh, oh, one moment. Um, OK, I'm just going to quickly find the scoop it link, which is at the end. OK, and then I think I'll switch off, because the next moderator might want to do his or her session. OK. As I said, I've, I've been creating all these comics specifically uh, for this session. A few of them are from the past that I use again and again. OK, so here you go. You go to that site. And um, if you have any cartoon sites that you're willing to share, Scoop It allows people to actually suggest uh, comics. And then I just add, click, and, you, and then it will be added to this site. OK. Is this my own room? OK, well, that's good. But I wouldn't like to bore anybody um, too much. So thank you very much uh, for attending. Ah, Clive, did we press record? Sabrina, did you press record? You did, I think, hopefully. Uh, I haven't put it on SlideShare yet. Uh, because I wanted to sort of have it here yet, but I will put it on SlideShare probably tomorrow when I've got a little bit more free time. Thanks, Faisal. Thank you for attending. So I'm just checking, Clive and Sabrina, has this been recorded? I do hope so. Okay. Thank you, Clive. Great.